Good morning, everyone. Oh my gosh, Moss. Uh, today, this week, we're looking at the fifth of the 13 rules of Toy Sensei for instructors. This one reads, the martial arts begin and end with respect. This should not be only in a visible form, but must come from our heart. Do not lose gratitude towards your teachers, especially the founder who opened the way. Those who neglect this should know that they may be neglected by their own students as well. Uh, there's a little threat in the, <laughs> involved in that. <laughs> Excuse me. So of course I, I made some notes about this and sent them to you. Um, primarily that uh, this word, I take this word to respect, to, to be referring to honoring uh, the freedom uh, that uh, the sacrifices of our teachers make and have made for us in the past to show us the way to that freedom. So, yeah, in other words, um, The the, 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 the the teaching, no matter what it is, has two aspects. It has a form, of course, it has a structure that we must learn to follow. And that is the secondary responsibility of the teacher, to show the form, to show the structure, to show the way to follow that. But the primary responsibility of the teacher is to show how to be free within the limitations of that form. So, let's face it, even respecting the teacher is a form and has limitations. How we treat the teacher, how we speak of the teacher, whether the teacher is alive or as long ago passed away, it makes no difference. We still must uh, find a way to be free within the limitations of how we uh, operate in relation to the teacher. And it turns out that that's what the sacrifice is that the teacher makes. The nature of the sacrifice is that he or she is learning or has learned throughout their life how to live within the confines of the relative world, which is constantly restricting us, limiting us. Instead of bumping into those boundaries that we're given and trying to force them and change them, uh, I mean, even if we're clever enough and persistent enough to move beyond one of those limitations, uh, everything is circular in this life and it will come up again and again and again until we learn the reason for it being there and learn to respect it and learn to live without suffering or struggling in relation to it. That's, let's face it, that's what the teacher is doing for us. I want you to consider this very deeply because this is not the way we think as free Americans. This is not the way we uh, think in this world. Every time we see a limitation in this world collectively, we immediately begin complaining about it and talking about how to change it. Waving signs, waving flags, making a lot of noise, maybe even throwing bombs. Whenever we see something, that we uh, are not able to live with in freedom. We begin to force it to change because we think this world should be heaven. This is not heaven, this is earth. We can live in heaven here, 
But we only live in heaven when we learn to respect the limitations of our own body, the limitations of our own level of wealth, the limitations of our own intellect, the limitations of our own structure, our own history, our own conditioning. This is what all of our life structure is made of. And constantly fighting against that is what creates this sense of a monkey mind and a, an anxiety in our heart that prevents us from experiencing peace and loving kindness to everyone and every situation that arises. This, folks, is wisdom. give you something to think about. Okay, let's do some, let's do some key breathing to begin with. <coughs> Excuse me. So there are, we've just practiced three different forms of meditation. Of course, we have to learn the form first to follow it, Kaisho. Then gradually we begin to be free of the form, Gyosho. And then finally, we're able to operate within a limited structure with a specific form, number of rules, regulations but not be a slave to that form. Be completely free of that form. That's what I'm talking about, social. So it's not just something that happens in Aikido techniques but it, or in uh, calligraphy, but it's something that is operating in every moment of our life. I'm sure you can think of many, many reasons to question this that I've just outlined for you. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Sensei, what about? Uh, and I respect that, of course. Uh, that's, you know, living here in this condition, in a body with limitation. You know, for instance, my voice and doesn't have the golden tones that he used to have before my operation. And when I first had this happen, of course, it was a restriction or a limitation that I struggled with and was very frustrated by and because I hadn't yet accepted that that's just a condition that is going to pervade from now on. Now I hardly ever think of it. I mean, I'm operating within it, and then it um, no longer holds any sway over me. In other words, yes, it doesn't control me, but I don't attempt to control it. In other words, I'm free of it. And apply that to every, <laughs> every moment of our life. We're all in this condition all the time. There's always something. So tell me a little bit about your uh, relationship with this. Sensei? Oh, gosh. Go ahead, Crystal. Crystal, would you like to go first? As you are talking about this theme, I had the Im image of like uh, to become an artist. First, you have to learn the form. And then after you have mastered the form, you can uh, 
express free. Is it true? Ah, yes. The art of Aikido is mm -hmm. exactly that. And yes, every every form, and not just uh, you know, every every skill can become an art form. Every form of work, every form of relationship, uh, learning can become an art form. We can become an artist with our partner, or can we can be struggling with the limitations of that relationship, and constantly uh, come up against uh, those limitations with frustration and maybe even anger, resentment, disappointment, and a complaint, and uh, spend all of our life trying to alter that form. Now, the I always ask myself, how do you want to spend your life? In frustration, anger, resentment, and struggle, or in freedom? We all have that opportunity at every moment. But of course, with artists, it's very obvious. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. For gosh. Thank you. <laughs> For gosh, I'm not hearing you. I think you need to unmute. Oh, thank you, Sensei, for the provocative question, which you know I've struggled with for as long as you've known me. And in terms of when the teacher you have respected behaves badly and you lose respect for the teacher, and yet to still hold the gratitude for the teaching and the transformation that may have happened, but then to hold that, you know, the, the behavior wasn't in line with the values that you originally connected with. <laughs> so what's the problem? <laughs> well, you know, this is, I've, I've struggled with this for 30 years, and I feel it in a clearer place with it, that I can hold both. But I definitely have lost respect for a teacher that I really respected very deeply. And, yeah. you know, it, it, <laughs> excuse me. that's been a challenge for me to. Um, yeah, well, you know, people that live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones at others. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We, um, or Jesus said, let it, he was out without blame, throw the first stone. Mm -hmm. But we are we feel somehow completely free mm -hmm. to be disturbed by the limitations of others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're living within our own limitations, aren't we? Mm -hmm. We have our own limitations. And um, you know, to, if we want to have freedom again, it's we're completely uh, well, free. We have the choice always to spend our lives struggling mm -hmm. with someone that we can't control. Mm -hmm. In any case, some situation that is beyond our control and being disappointed about it and, and having an inner sort of turmoil mm -hmm. or accepting it for what it is mm -hmm. and yeah. living a life within it of freedom. We, it's, I think you mentioned there we are following a teaching, we are not following a teacher. Uh -huh. yeah. When we think we are following a teacher, we are um, tricked into adoring something, mm -hmm. uh, an adoration that is not adorable. Mm -hmm. The teaching is adorable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't mean in a childish way, but it yeah. is to be adored. Yeah. It's to be respected, it's to be... Uh, cherished mm -hmm. and the teacher is there functionally for us mm -hmm. and we must accept that and be grateful mm -hmm. that that teacher is willing to show his or her own idiotic <laughs> restricted imperfections to everybody 
in order to get this teaching across. Mm -hmm. Somebody has to sit, step forward and do it. Mm -hmm. And if you're called to do that, mm -hmm. um, as both you and I have been, mm -hmm. then you, we just do our best. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I think once we become a teacher, we're much more likely to criticize other teachers. <laughs> <laughs> At least in my case, that's true. Yeah. yeah. I, th I think my idealization and adoration for this masterful teacher prevented me from seeing that he was also a flawed human being. Yeah, it's as, as am I. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. idolatry. Is what it yeah. Is. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. then that's myself I'm being disappointed in. If that's what I've been doing, so then I've been a slave to the form. Yeah. I've been enslaved by the form instead of operating freely within it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, thank you very much for that, Prakash. You know, I think what we need to do, as I, I mean, I, I think, let me put it another way. Our practice is to examine each of these restrictions as they arise in our life and see the truth of them individually. It's too often that we look at a general malaise, like the way the world is, and feel disappointed and fearful and anxious about it, instead of looking at each individual uh, challenge, limitation, structural, boundary as it arises in our life and addressing that one fully uh, then we're we can be more capable of living a life of freedom um, you know Suzuki Roshi used to say we have to simplify our lives mm -hmm. and people thought that meant oh don't eat so much food or something but that's not what he's talking about <laughs> he's talking about taking it a moment at a time Mm -hmm. because otherwise it's all too complex. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sensei. Um, someone else, please. Yeah, come on. This is a big subject, and it affects every single one of us. Sanjay, good morning. Good morning. How are you, Merta? <laughs> Fine, thanks. Sanjay, um, there are moments when I'm perfectly aware that my problem with someone is my problem and that the problem is an invitation to myself <clears throat> and to show loving kindness. And I force myself to sort of open and go to the person and then when the meeting is there I shrivel up and um, I cannot be loving I I, um, I react to the person and then I think I better not go there at all so then I doubt should I what is forcing yourself to open because you know I know I'm the problem and when could I better stay away until I genuinely feel open yeah well, that's like a, a sublimitation. <laughs> um, you know, you, 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 the limitation perhaps, let's say that with the other person is something you would like to address freely, um, but you can't do that. You have, a, you're, you have another limitation that is a, a lack of confidence perhaps, or a, a, a hesitation of danger in case there's some sort of uh, rec uh, re recourse that happens. That's another limitation. But that's the limitation that we work with first. The, what you're saying is it's so revealing because it's like, okay, you see a problem with another person. Now I'm sure that that problem that you have with the other person, you don't recognize as completely your own problem. You might think that you maybe you're beyond blaming the other person 
completely for the problem. But you probably think that, no, maybe not. <laughs> but so then no wonder you can't address it if you're blaming someone else. So you can, we can't address an issue that we are feeling in our hearts, in our bodies, in our minds, until we recognize who is feeling that problem. As long as we think someone else is causing that, rather than our own conditioning, our own reaction to that person is causing our feeling. As long as we think somebody else is causing the feeling, then we're not seeing the whole picture. We're not seeing a true picture. And we really set out, the reason it's so difficult for you is because you set out in some way to fix that other person, to fix the problem by talking to the other person. Did you want to say something? That, that's true, Sensei. And I also try to fix myself for trying to fix that person. So I keep fixing, but um, there are moments when the situation calls for me to meet that person and refusing would also be closing myself. So I thought the universe is asking me to, to go there and to open myself and meet the person. And I also feel not ready because I still blame that person. Right, so it starts to get complex. Look, let's go Yes, back. I'm afraid. <laughs> to the so. aspect, four aspects of our practice, show up open, follow, and accept the result. So that when we are not able to do that with someone else, then we see the sublimitation and we practice, we bring those same four aspects to ourself, to that thing within ourself. We show up, we face it, we open to it, we follow it so we can see where it's taking us, where that attitude, where that belief, where that structure is taking us. And then we accept the resolution. It's like um, um, one of our teachers uh, in Aikido, uh, Tracy Reasoner Sensei told me that in the beginning class, he asked the students to ask themselves five times why they came to, to came to Aikido. You remember this. So this this is basically doing that same thing. Why did you come to Aikido? Well, I want to learn to be stronger. Why do you need to be stronger? Well, I I find myself weaker. Why do you find yourself weaker? And you go and look and look and look and look, but you bring freedom. You bring openness. You bring the willingness to follow. You bring the willingness to accept the result, all of those, to each situation that arises. And just take them one at a time. Not while I'm doing this, thinking, okay, how can I, how can I change this other guy with this? No, just resolve. And you'll find, in the end, that nobody needs fixing. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, we're a little bit over time. Um, this is a big subject for each of us to, uh, to, to, to tangle with, to look into, and address within ourselves. Very important part of our practice. Thank you very much. See you next week.